Ladies and gentlemen, I cover a lot of different chess on this channel. But in particular, one of the things that I like to cover is my own games. Because I am not one of the best chess players in the world. And I don't play perfect chess. And I also have human emotions. I'm not a cyborg. I'm not really experienced in playing at an elite competitive level. And I think that resonates with many of you. But also, I think I'm able to break down motifs and ideas and thoughts in my own games in a way that you can understand, and not just watch, but also potentially include in your own games of chess. That was a very long-winded way of saying that yesterday I played in Title Tuesday on Chess.com, and I played against Hikaru. Now, this is like my third game against Hikaru in a year, and for whatever reason, I can't get paired against Magnus Carlsen, but you already know when that happens, that's going to be a banger of a video. I played a fantastic game of chess against Hikaru. I'm very proud of it. I would like to show it to you. Maybe I won. Maybe I drew. Maybe I lost. I don't know. But that's the beauty, and we are going to check this out. Without further ado, here we go. Today's video is sponsored by Air. Just Air. Air sponsored this video. Please remember to breathe. Meditate a little bit. Breathe in, breathe out. Anytime you feel a little overwhelmed, go outside, get some fresh air. If you live somewhere dangerous, maybe stay inside. Now, I had the black pieces. Hikaru opened with E4, which was already a surprise to me, by the way. Like, I, 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 uh, I got paired against Hikaru, and normally when I get paired against Hikaru, I just yell a lot, and then I prepare myself for the... You know, playing Hikaru for me is like knowing I have a dentist appointment, you know? Like, I know what the result is going to be. I just have to kind of sit and, 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 and be brave and whatever. Usually he plays knight f3. He likes to play a little bit more positionally against me because I'm aggressive. And, you know, uh, he played e4. And um, for me, it's like a split-second decision what I play in the opening. I mean, I can play a Karl Khan. I can, I've been, recently I've been playing a lot of Scandinavian. I actually am working on a Scandinavian course. Maybe if you watch this sometime in the future, it's already out. Um, but I went for a French. And I like to create massive imbalance in the French defense with this, uh, with, with this uh, move, pawn takes, knight takes, knight f6. I really like this line. It's very fun for blitz. You damage your structure, but you get the open G file. You can target white center. It's a very fun, very fun line that I, that I like to play. It's like my little pet line. Uh, he went here, and at this point I already grimaced. Because this is the King's Indian attack. Uh, you can play e4, d3, knight d2, and then g3, and bishop g2, and knight f3. You can play this with white against anything. Against anything. Like, you could play it against the Karl Khan. You can't really play it against d5, because, like, it's a more center-based approach, so black would very quickly get two pawns in the center like this. Um, but yeah, I mean, he, you know, he played d3, and I, and I knew right away what he was going to go for, so I went, I went d5. <clears throat> oh my god, I don't know why that was such an aggressive infiltration of air into my nose. <clears throat> Bless me though. d5, knight d2, knight f6, knight f3. He's gonna go here, here, and here. He's trying to play in a, in a solid maneuvering positional way, try to get me a little bit um, thrown off. And so there's many lines here. Like, the standard approach is black goes here, white goes here, black goes here, white goes here, black goes... Bishop e7, both sides castle, and then, you know, white plays like rook e1, c3, and then black, like, plays b5 and tries to attack. It's very normal. I, you know, that, that's one approach. Uh, I, I decided to play g6 because I wanted to put my bishop on g7. That was my, you know, like, in blitz, I, I, I like to frequently fianchetto, I, I like to put my bishop on g7. I like to fianchetto my bishop. I think it can often do very well against opponents. So g3, bishop g7, bishop g2, and we both had the same idea, we both castled. And so, what white likes to do by playing this kind of close center type of game, is white likes to play rook e1 to support the center, knight to f1 to maneuver, pawn to h4, and actually pawn to h5 in many cases, and the knight maneuvers through where that pawn used to be. To prevent black's expansion on the queen side, white frequently will play a4 or c3, and sometimes the center closes, sometimes not. So, play can now go in many directions, and the direction it's going to go is me taking a sip of my matcha. I've been trying different uh, caffeine sources recently, especially later in the day. I don't like such a big caffeine push, because then I don't sleep. A5. This move is simply trying to take space on the queen side without committing anything else. If Hikoru plays a4, which stops me from expanding, I now get good access to the b4 square, and if he plays c3 to prevent access to the b4 square, I get that target. 
So the move A5 actually, you know, saw me looking 14 million possibilities ahead, and that's why I played A5. And Hikaru played E5, which is a very committal decision. Very, very committal. Um, but the thing is, if you're going to implement the game plan of the King's Indian attack, which is to attack black, you prefer a close center. You don't want to do this. Uh, if you try to play H4, I'll go here, you won't attack anybody, and now the center's open, so I have tons of counterplay. So Kikaro plays E5, which I, you know, I thought about, 97. One other thing I'm very happy about as well, look at the time. Look at the time. I'm not overthinking, which for me is a big deal, because when I play really good players, especially when I play like Hikaru, you know, when you play Hikaru, you just, the game boots up, and immediately you're like, okay, I'm gonna lose, but, you know, I might try my best. That's a really weird place to be psychologically. Some of you probably have chess friends that are a couple hundred points higher than you, Again, you, you could have a positive mindset of, I'm going to try my best, I'm going to try to beat them, you know, they're better than me, but I'm going to try my, my best, and if I play my best, I know I can maybe, you know, beat them, maybe I give them a good fight. I don't have that when I play Hikaru. Frankly, I don't have that against, like, the top 50 on chess.com, but, <clears throat> hey, A3? <clears throat> what was going on with me today? Hikaru stops me from playing A3, because if he plays C3, maybe I play A3, I give up the pawn, but I damage his structure. Plays A3. And I do my typical, you know, c5, all right? I'm expanding on that side of the board. And um, I want to play b5, knight c6, just get as many pawns rolling forward as possible. So here, of course, I'm, I'm very cognizant of the fact that Hikaru closed the center and also drove my knight away from the defense of my king. So I imagine that at some moment he's going to begin attacking. Of course, I'm, 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 I'm very scared, but I'm putting on a brave face, right? I'm attacking his pawn in the center of the board. He's defending it. And a major question here is, should I play f6? Should I completely get rid of this pawn? Not that one, that one. But then I open up his bishop and rook. And then I also give him access to e5. So he can always play knight e5 now. He can play like knight e5, and, and, and it's a very, very nice position for white. So I decided that when he played bishop f4, I'm not going to play uh, f6. I also made a decision I'm not going to play h6 because I thought it was stupid. I thought, well, I, he's going to go here anyway. So, like, why would I do that? And if I play king h7, he's just going to play queen d2, knight h2, knight g4. Like, he's just going to go for my pawn. And then that's really bad. So I thought, you know what? I need to be brave. I need to not fidget on this side of the board. I need to let Hikaru come to me. I need to stick to my plan with b5. Okay? Hikaru did not rush. He played c3. It's very important, actually, he, he, he plays c3. It's the best move. It's, it's the only reason it's point three one. That's it. So, multiple times in this game, I put Hikaru in a situation where he needs to play the best move. Like, he has to play one of one. He can't ignore me. He can't just go for an attack. Because as it so happens, uh, like, my, my counterplay is quite strong here. So he plays c3, right? And he, he's trying to build up the center with d4, and I play queen b6. That's how you play in these King's Indian attack positions. White comes to you on the king side, and now we see Hikaru playing h4. This is quite scary. The guy's rated 3,200. Second highest rated player on chess.com and blitz. Right, I gotta think, queen, knight is gonna come in, the same side pawn attack, is my bishop gonna get stuck in the corner, am I gonna get mated? And I was brave and just played b4, just went, just went along with it, so it's what I gotta do. Now, as you can see, I started spending more time, right, so I spent 17 seconds on b5, then I spent, you know, 5 seconds, that's normal, then I spent another nearly 20 seconds, and then I took, and I was already very nervous here, because I thought, oh man, he's still got 258, like he's made every move so damn fast, right? So, I thought he could do a lot of different things. I thought he could take, and then I would take, and then maybe he takes on a4, but then I have rook takes and queen takes. I thought I could go knight c5, which looked nice, and bishop a6. And I just thought, okay, look, if Hikaru wants to get a game where I'm just stripping down his queen side, and it's like a race, you know, it's a race of, can I beat him there before he beats me here? I'm gonna be happy. Then I thought, well, he could, you know, he could take once and then not take a second time. Or he could take this way once and not take a second. So I didn't know what to expect. But he went here. Big move. And the computer not, not you know, thinks it's equal. Very, very tense position. Thinks it's equal. I can take, but I thought that was stupid. I thought taking was bad because I open up his queen. And I also open up the diagonal for his bishop. Which I, this did not look good to me. The computer finds bishop to b7. Hanging the knight. Because if you take the knight, the queen is trapped. Which is bogus which I obviously did not see. And then if he keeps attacking me, I can play b3, which I would have never, I would have never in a million years played the move b3. How can you lock the queen side? Now you, where are you going? You got nowhere to go now. Computer thinks it's fine, and then you put the knight on d4. I don't know. I would have never done that in a million years. 
But bishop b7 is what the computer likes. Anyway, I didn't do that. I went here. And my idea was I'm attacking the pawn, so I know his next move. His next move is going to be to take back. And now I thought something very simple, very straightforward. Hikaru cannot checkmate me, which is clearly what he's playing for, without his queen. He cannot checkmate me without his queen, so I play queen b3. Now if we trade queens, I'm two squares from queening, but I also have a massive advantage. Because I'm threatening all this. He could go here to get my pawn, but then I get this. So the rook cannot attack and defend at the same time. I played queen b3. I was actually pretty happy here. Then he went queen e2. And suddenly I started thinking, wait a minute, is my queen stuck? Because right now the only way for my queen to get out is this way. What if he goes here? Well, then I slide over, right? And I thought I should put more pressure on this pawn. So I went bishop a6. And here I had a mini heart attack. I had a mini heart attack because I thought my queen was trapped. I thought rook b1, queen c3, the bishop goes back. And I thought, oh, I'm, that's it. It's game over because I can only move queen here because the queen is blocked. And then he's just going to play knight e3 or knight e1 to trap my queen. And I thought, oh man, the game's over. It's not. As it turns out, if he goes here, 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 I use danger levels. His queen is worth as much as my queen. Knight d4. This is the saving move. I attack the queen. I'm threatening to take. I'm threatening to get out with my queen. And after this, I would escape. And I would actually be fine. And this pawn would be a huge weakness. So, very interesting. I, uh, I played bishop a6. And for a moment, I had a heart attack. I thought, oh my god, I lost to Hikaru in 12 moves. 17 moves, 15 moves, whatever. All right? I, um, yeah. I thought that was it. Thought I lost. But then he went here. And he spent 20 seconds. Which, like, to make Hikaru think for 20 seconds is a big deal. You know, I he played 92. And the funniest thing is, the position is 0.7. If and only if Hikaru plays this move. So again, I was happy that I, you know, for me, getting Hikaru to a situation he's going to play really precisely to deal with the pressure is good. Because if he took my pawn, I wouldn't have taken back. Because a pawn and a knight are not worth as much as a queen. So I would have taken this first, and then I would have been a pawn up. And I would have been very happy. Two connected pass pawns, position looks very nice. So he went knight d2, and I slid in, ready to get out in a moment's notice. He went rook c1. Now as it turns out, I can actually annoy him and go here, which is hilarious. And on this move, I can just bounce around his position like a, like a, like a pinball machine. Just threatening everything. Just yelling at everybody. Um, instead of that, I was like, look, I'm not going to get my queen traps. So let's play queen a5. And now Hikaru played h5. And, and this is where, you know, I, I felt the most pressure in the game. Um, the computer says to take this pawn. What Hikaru is doing here is a culmination of the plan of his opening. But it's very important that my knight is gone. Remember, like, a long time ago, he played e5. My knight was removed as a defender of my king. I really shouldn't have... I, I couldn't stick around because I would have gotten trapped in the future. So we fast forward, like, 20 moves, right? And now Hikaru plays h5. My knight is gone, and I really should not be taking because this is so ugly. These pawns are really, really weak. And slowly, he will get there. Maybe not right away, but he will get there. You know, here, here, checkmate. The computer, cold-blooded, says, take the pawn and vibe. <clears throat> I can't do... I mean, that does not strike me as normal. So I went here. And that was my biggest mistake of the game. Now the computer finds a sequence of moves that tears my position apart. It all begins with h6. I knew this move was possible. I didn't see its power because I thought, well, now I'm safe. My king is safe. Like, my bishop is guarding my king. I'm never getting mated. But then the computer finds take, take, e6. And uh, this is very brutal because my knight hangs, my rook hangs, Hikaru's rook hangs, but if I play something like rook e8, he just gets my king out, shreds my king, and then mates me in brutal fashion like this. I have to give up both my rooks. So when I played rook b8 with the intention of creating b-file counterplay, I saw that and I saw this. But I missed how powerful e6 was. But we both did. We actually both did. It would have been better for me to go here.
because that actually prevents e6. But this pawn, to me, mentally was just immobile because there's a rook there, so he can't move that pawn. But we actually both missed that. I played rook b8, fearing the worst, and here Hikaru spent some time, and he played a move that I very, I'm very proud to say during the game, I knew was a bad move. He went here. And as you can see, all two points of advantage were gone. I didn't realize it was plus two because nobody saw that h6, take, take, e6. We both missed that. Queen e1. Now it's equal. Now I thought it was equal even in the position prior. Like I thought the position was balanced. But I was like, queen e1? Why? I'll tell you why. I, I actually think this is like a let Gotham self-destruct kind of a move. Which, listen, when you play me, perfectly legitimate strategy, by the way. And in my true style, you know, I, I, I just kind of like slid a piece over because I was like, I'm not going to touch anything. I don't want to ruin my position. Turns out I can already begin taking and taking. Turns out I can already take this pawn. Which is incredible. Because after knight takes, I can play knight takes. After bishop takes, I can play bishop takes. And the queen stops guarding the knight. And like, I, I don't get mated because the queen takes the pawn. It's unbelievable. But, you know, he would like take on d5. And then I would take, and then he would take, and then I would take. But <laughs> black is surviving, apparently. Black just puts the king here. Black's surviving. It's amazing. He went here, and I thought, okay, I, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't see that idea, so I played rook e8. My idea with rook e8 was to bring my knight to guard my king even more, because I thought this knight was poorly placed. And Hikaru's next move kind of expedited that plan, because now he has a threat. Now, if I play king h8, he wins because he takes. I can't take because of this. So I thought, okay, bishop h3, but I was always going to go knight f8. As it turns out, I can still go here. So, like, if I spot this move, there is a very, very, very high chance I simplify the position massively. Now, unfortunately, I didn't see that move. Because when I play Hikaru, I just got to be a little bit more confident. But, you know, against any player, frankly, I'm playing passively, right? I'm playing too passively. Playing too passively. I'm still thinking like, oh, Hikaru's gonna take at some point. It's like, what? Why? Why, why don't I take? Like, why am I not the one considering, you know, and then if he plays knight takes, then we trade the queens, and then I take the knight, and then I, etc. Like, why, why is it only if he takes? Now, finally, he played this. I had been expecting this move, right? So I went bishop h8. I didn't know what his next idea was gonna be, but I knew we were gonna get into a scramble, and I was unhappy because I was down 50 seconds. So what happens when you play Hikaru? He plays so fast. Like, every move is so, so quick. Now, queen e3... This was annoying. Again, Hikaru found the best move, I think. I think queen e3 was the best move. The idea of queen e3 is genius. Right now, I have a very strong center. I'm disallowing a lot of forward piece mobility for his army. So he plays queen e3, targeting my pawn in the event of a capture. And the bad news is, I can't do anything about that. If I capture now and we go through this sequence, there is no queen trade. A move ago, there was a queen trade. Now I just lose my pawn. I can play knight d7, but then I remove defenders of my king, and he can start attacking my king a little bit more. It's pretty passive. It'll, I'll survive, but it's passive. But the idea is to bait this move. d4. is the best move. But it gives him this. Right? That's, this is the piece I've been trying to restrict the whole game. I've been trying to disallow him from trying to punish me on the dark squares. I already envision a world he goes here. He goes here, right? He gets in. He gets a queen to g7. I get mated. This bishop is my lifeline. Like, I can't lose the bishop. So it's very, very dangerous. So he, he plays a move, baiting upon move, and then he slides forward. He could have slid back. He could have slid forward. But now he's targeting my knight. Now he gets me to play another move, which blocks my rook. <clears throat> And now he slides backwards, and he's still up a minute. He's still up a minute. He's slightly better. He got access to the center. He has a lot of control of potential dark squares. And of course, I'm a little bit nervous. And now I play knight e7. I played knight e7 to obviously open my bishop and go help my king. And potentially target this pawn. Okay, Hikaru plays knight e4. And now, I thought I came up with a very nice idea. I can't let his knight go any further, right? Here or here. If I play knight f5... He'll play here. And I can't move. If I play knight d7 to try to get out, he'll push my knight back. I go back. He gets in here. He gets in here. It's bad. So I thought, why not trade? I'm just going to chop his knight down. 
Normally, a bishop for a knight is a bad decision. If he takes like this, they should revoke the grandmaster title because doubled pawns and now you give me this. That's not what you want. He didn't do that. He took like this. So he controls some diagonals here, but his light squared bishop is still not threatening me. And he's not getting in on the dark squares. And so what I played here, again, a little too passive. I probably should have tried to get out. I was like, oh, queen trade. Look at that. Let's trade the queens, Hikaru. Let's trade the queens. And then we'll both fight for the B file and we'll both get our piece. All, all, you know, we'll get our pieces over there. It'll be a good, a, a, a nice fun game. I thought Hikaru can't mate me with no queen. Plus I have 40 seconds. So I have to play fast. The computer wants this. It just wants me to relax, like not stress. If bishop g5, I can go here. If rookie one, I can get my rook in. Like, let me start creating some counterplay. Look at this. I got four pieces accosting that pawn. Is that the right word? I thought it was like when you when you apprehend somebody, you you know, you, you go to it. I hope I hope that's the right word. Anyway, uh Queen E2. He says no queen trade. And now I start getting my knight out. I got 40 seconds on the clock. I'm slightly worse. Knight g5. I'm under a lot of pressure. His bishop is gonna come here. What do I do? Well, let's plop the knight into the center of the attack. I wanted Hikaru to play g4 because I thought it was blocking his bishop and I thought that was good for me. The computer is not so convinced, but I convinced Hikaru because he went back. He went back to the e4 square. He, didn't, like, I'm not, he was on f3, but I'm just saying he went back to try to you know jump in and maybe play g4 next or take my knight. Now, uh, I took a pawn. I took a pawn. And I thought I was fine. I was like, wait a minute, knight takes. What, what is Hikaru's idea? If he's going to take on c5, I'm going to play knight f3 check. He's going to go here. And then, I don't know, e5. And I'm like almost winning. <laughs> so when I took on e5, I was like, wait a minute, did he blunder? Now I got 28 seconds. I got 28 seconds. He didn't quite blunder. It was like more of an instinct type of move where he kind of felt like all this pressure was going to pay off. I went to a5, and now the move g4 is very, very good. If g4, the knight has to go, the knight goes, he gets into d6, attacking my rook and attacking the knight with the queen. I would go here. He would need to take my knight, maintaining more pressure. And then I would have to find the only move in the position, which is, I would probably never find in a million years, which is now queen a8 defending my knight and my back rank. And for example, if bishop takes, I can't take because this is mate, right? All the, but, but that, I told you the bishop was my savior. So when he plays bishop e5, I have to find knight f4. And if he plays here threatening mate, I mate him. <laughs> That's what I had to do. That's what I had to do. That was the only, if g4. But then Hikaru thought, and went knight d6. Now, knight d6 still struck me as a winning idea. Because if I take, then he takes, attacking my knight, threatening to take my bishop and checkmate me on g7. If I take with the knight, he takes, I take with the bishop, he takes with the queen, he's threatening my knight, and he's threatening mate. And I'm lost. But then I found... I can take, I can take, and now I just gotta be able to play this move. So look at this nice idea. Defending my knight, and if take, I can always play f6. And I thought I was in good shape. Well, as it turns out, we both missed that the knight can come back, but then it can go back to the open square. Somehow there's a blockade mentally on this square. The best line is take, take, and take because of this and i'm threatening to take the pawn i'm not just defending mate i'm threatening to take the pawn which is preventing which is which is allowing the checkmate so g4 knight h6 and black is winning okay winning better black is potentially going to lose anyway but better and you know there's some cool ideas in this position for example uh like uh, this queen takes f2 <laughs> Sacrificing the queen to bait the knight in a, the king into a, a knight fork. There's a lot of these incredible ideas. And, and the defense of knight f5 was there. Knight takes d6, bishop e5, and then putting the knight back. And I, 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 it's crazy. I would have been like minus 0.7. Now, of course, woulda, coulda, shoulda.
but I still thought I'm defending myself. And then, you know, Hikaru took, and I we both realized, you know, I'd, I'd stop the mate, he would take, and I would go here, and the game goes on. I'm gonna get his pawn. But at this point, with 20 seconds on the clock, I kind of came to this sobering realization. This is a very clean-cut example of bishop is better than the knight, particularly on an open board, and especially in endgames. We are nearing a heavy piece endgame. A lot of pieces have been traded, the heavy artillery is still on the board, but it's queens and rooks and bishops, and knight, right? Queen, rook and bishop is bishop versus knight. The fact that the bishop is sniping from a distance and is scoring two pawns is a very, very, very big deal. And when Hikaru went here, I knew I was going to have to lose my pawn. So I went for a queen trade and I took the pawn because I had to. But I think this is a very, very, very big advantage for white. Like, it's, I can't even put my rooks anywhere. Like, I can't fight back in a, in a good way. And if I try to create counterplay, I'm too slow. So he went c5. He's now three squares away from queening. What I should have done is probably gone e5. And when he plays c6, I don't know, block the pawn and try to fight because now he blocked his own bishop. But 18 seconds on the clock, you know, I, I, I put the rooks, but then he went here. I brought my knight, but then he went rook b1. Again, it, it's an end game. It's an end game. So all queens and rook trades are going to be beneficial because the bishop is better than the knight. The bishop is just standing from a distance escorting the pawns. Shows you the dominance, the dominance of the bishop versus the knight. So I went here, but we're just trading too many pieces. He plays this very nice centralizing move targeting my weakness and also teaming up on c7. And now the pawn has arrived and yeah, I have three seconds. He's trying to go here. I thought I, one last gasp was queen e5. I thought this was a very clever idea. My point is I'm trying to get in to attack his king. So I thought bishop b7, knight takes pawn. If he takes, it's a draw. So I saw that. I saw that with two seconds on the clock. If Hikaru would have blundered like that, I would have went here, and it would have been a draw. King f1, and I would have had to sack my rook, but it was perpetual check. Queen d3, I mean, it's still very tough to spot all of this, because, like, this loses, but this is a draw. But that's what you got to do. When desperate times call for desperate measures, you got to open up the king. You got to sacrifice to try to get to their king. That's why I went knight g3. I was looking for knight g3 ideas. This is actually still the best move, believe it or not, because here you just don't take the knight. It's not checkers. And if fork, you know, like, that's great, but he's gonna queen. But I, I, I made him play the, you know, I made him play a little defense. He played queen c5, which completely kills my fun. Now knight g3 is just met with a queen trade. And I took... And I, I, I thought I was really clever, by the way. Look at me. I'm stopping. Oh my god, I'm going to go. I'm going to win his pawn. I'm going to play 98 and take his pawn. I'm so smart. It's Hikaru, man. It's, it's, no. Rook c6. And the problem is here that by the time I take the pawn, by the time I play a move like 98 or knight b5, it's all the same. He's going to force me not to take with the rook. He's going to force me to take with the knight. And that's... Paralysis. I can't move my knight or my rook. If my king was closer, maybe. But right now I'm frozen. And I, I went to e8, but he just took my pawn. And I can't take with the rook. So I took like this, just out of inertia. I mean, it's already lost. He just goes right back. And that's it. That's the end of the game because he's just going to push. Or he'll play bishop d5, bishop e6. And he's going to win. So rook b8, rook 7 And I think I ran out. I mean... Res resignation running half a second out on the clock is virtually the same thing. Um, honestly, of all the games I've played against Hikaru in the last year, this one I can be happy with. Um, still a little bit too passive. Like, I definitely have to shift my mindset to take my chances a bit more. Like, Hikaru's a human. He's not an indestructible cyborg that's killing me at all times. Like, he's human. He makes inaccuracies, you know? Even Hikaru Magnus, they always... Queenie won in this position instead of this bulldozer with taking. Like, they make inaccuracies. And um, I had to wait, I had to do less waiting for him to do something in the position and seize the moment myself a little bit more. But even so, like the, the last mistake that I made was here. I mean, it was either I find the defense of my king, which just so happens to get me into a better position, or I let him play out the combination into an endgame where my chances look very bleak with the bishop versus the knight. So, overall... Don't really hate this performance. Um, we're gonna keep trying our best. We're gonna keep trying our best. 
And uh, maybe one day I will get my second win in my life against Hikaru. And if you don't know the first one, I made a video about it. So it's called The One Time I Beat Hikaru. Or The One Time Levy Beat Hikaru. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Get out of here.